Okay, welcome back everybody. Uh, today we're going to talk about um, matrix solutions to uh, linear systems. We've already looked at uh, ways in which we can uh, solve linear systems. Uh, two equations, two variables, we could use graphing, elimination or substitution. Uh, when we got to a 3 by 3 system, then we needed to uh, look at a, uh, a Gauss elimination method and that was to reduce things down uh, a general system as we know here reduce it down to the um, AX plus BY plus CZ equals D and then of course we dropped it down to uh, EY plus uh, FZ equals um, G and then of course we went down to um, uh, just HZ equals K. Alright, and it got uh, quite involved in keeping track of the equations, uh, reducing a variable at each step. Now we're going to move to a more shorthand or more efficient way of doing this. Remember we're dealing with a, uh, in this case, a 3 by 3 system because we have three variables and three equations. And uh, we're going to form what's called a matrix. A matrix is basically a rectangular array of the elements, but the elements are in fact um, entries which are made up of um, the coefficients of the equations. So the matrix form, for example, for a 3x3 uh, a three three system, which is this system here. Notice we have 2x1 minus 3x2 minus xq, uh, x3 is equal to 0 and 3x1 plus 2x2 plus 2x3 is equal to 2, and x1 plus 5x2 plus 3x3 equals 2, then we form what's called an augmented matrix form. Now the augmented matrix is having these square parentheses, and then we start forming the entries from the coefficients of the variables. So we have a 2 here, coming from here. We have a negative 3, from here and a negative 1 from here. And our constant was 0, so that was this. So notice that the, we just read off the numbers as coefficients. Now we put a line here, this is called the augmentation. Right, just to divide, and it sort of acts like the equal signs, if you like. Right, then we have 3, 2, 2, and 2. Notice we have 3, 2, 2, 2. And then we have a 1, a 5, a 3, and a 2. A 1, a 5, a 3, and a 2. All right, now, <laughs> we put the square brackets. Now, notice that we have rows that are formed up. All right, so we have rows here. And notice that we have three rows. Okay. Notice that we then have columns this way. So these are the columns. And in this case, we have four columns. So we call this a four by, th um, sorry, a three by four matrix. So three by four. So we talk about the rows by the columns. Okay. All right. So notice here that this one is a three row four columned uh, matrix. So we say it's a three by four. matrix. So we write as 3 by 4, like so. <clears throat> like so. Alright, now that's our first step, is to always to transform a matrix, uh, uh, sorry, a, an equation, a system of linear equations, into this matrix form. It's called an augmented matrix. And the line is there to make sure we understand that we have a 3 by 3 um, system, right, and of course we have these constants right here. And that's our constants column. Okay, right, now what we're going to do is we're going to take those um, equation operations that we could use and we're going to turn them into what we call trans, um, matrix transformations. And you'll notice that the similarity of these Right, these following matrix transformations produce what's called an equivalent matrix system for any augmented matrix right, of a system of linear equations. 
So if I have a system of linear equations and I can form an augmented matrix, then I can apply these matrix transformations to produce an equivalent matrix. Equivalent matrix means it has the same solutions. Okay, so we haven't changed the solutions. Right, so you'll recognize some of these. Notice we can interchange any two rows. So in other words, interchanging rows is the same as changing the order of the equations. We can actually multiply or divide the entries of any row by a non-zero real number. Notice that, remember, with the equations, we could actually multiply or divide because dividing is the same as multiplying. Right, uh, any, all right, of the equations by a non-zero real number. And thirdly, we can replace any row of the matrix by the sum of the entries of that row and a multiple of entries of another row. In other words, we can multiply a row by a multiple, a non-zero multiple, all right, and add it to another row to, prove, to produce a new row. And that's the same as what we did with the equations. We could multiply an equation by a non-zero number right and then add that row that equation to another equation to form a new equation right now our objective in doing this is to form diagonal form right now notice here this is going to look very similar to this is what we did up here all right we sort of had this step type form all right and that was um gauss um a gaussian process <coughs> excuse me and so uh, what we're going to do is go a little bit further and we're going to produce just a one here with a zero underneath it, a zero is to the right and then the one underneath that. And we keep going, if it was a three by three case, we keep going down here, we build up zeros underneath the diagonal of ones. And then we have a row here of constants. Notice this is like our equal signs. And so therefore we can read off, remember that this was um, x, y, and z. So I can read off straight away that z was three, y was four, and x was negative two. Right, so we want to learn how to get this into what's called diagonal form, or sometimes what we call reduced row echelon form. Now the way to do that is we need to follow through by using our transformations all right, to put the zeros in the correct places and get the ones in the correct places. So this is the, the method that we follow. And this is called the Gauss-Jordan method for transforming a matrix into diagonal form using matrix transformations. All right, first of all, we obtain a one as the first entry in the first column. There it is right there. That's our objective, make sure we get that one there first. Then using the first row, we transform the remaining entries in the first column to zeros. So here's zero, here, zero, here. Notice that's what we have here, one here and a zero here. So we get a one, first of all, in the top left entry, and then we use that using our transformations to get zeros below it. Next, we obtain a one in the second position. And then we use that one to get zeros below and above. Okay. All right, next we can use, uh, next we want to get a zero in the next position. And then we're going to get zeros above it. Okay, and we continue doing this until we get it into this form here. All right, so let's look at an example. All right, here we go. Use the Gauss-Jordan method to uh, solve the linear system of equations. Now, they, these should look uh, familiar. All right, and uh, you'll notice that um, this is from our very first um, lecture dealing with linear systems. All right, so step one. We, first of all, um, we convert this to a, all right, this system of linear equations to an augmented matrix. Right, so that's uh, not too hard. We have a one there in front of the x, a negative two. I have a one there in front of the next x, and a negative one. 
I put my augmentation down, here's my constants, and there's my result. Okay, so step one is not too hard. Right, now step two is we need to get a one in this position. We already have a one. So that's pretty good. Okay, so we don't have to do any with that. So now what I need then is to get a zero here. So we're requiring a zero here. Now, how do I do that? Well, if I take my, um, my second row here, so notice that this is row one, row two. So if I take, get my second row, and I add negative one times the first row to produce a new row two. Notice the way I've written this, okay? Row two is the one I'm changing. I'm adding negative one times row one, so this would be now become a negative one, this would become a positive two, and this would become a negative two, and I'm adding row two, uh, that to row two, to produce a new row two. So what does that produce? Well, my first row stays the same. Very important. It's the second row that's changing. So I have one plus negative one, which is zero now. That's our objective, is to get a zero there. Now, of course, we have negative one plus two because this now was multiplied by negative one, so that would have been a plus two, so negative one plus two is one, so I get a one here. Now I have a four plus a negative two, which would be a two. Right, so our objective of getting a zero underneath that first entry, which we call the pivot, actually, all right, uh, is uh, obtained. Right, now what I want now is a zero here. All right, so this time I want to change row one, so I'm getting row one, and I need to add two times row two, because that will make this one a two, when I add, I'll get a zero, and this will produce a new row one. So what will that get? All right, so my second row now stays the same, because that's not being changed, but the first row is being changed. So what we have here now is we have twice this one, so it's going to be 1 plus 0 is 0 still. Uh, sorry, 1, I should say. 1 plus 0 is 1. All right, then we have um, a negative uh, 2 plus 2 would be 0. Okay, because remember that was, uh, this one here was multiplied by 2. And then we have 2 plus 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times 4 would be 6. Now remember, don't lose sight of what these columns represent. This is x and this is y, and these are the constants. So now I can read off my answer. So I now have that x is equal to 6. I have y is equal to 2. So my solution is, as we got before, all right, the point 6, 2. Okay, so that's how we do um, using Gauss-Jordan. All right, next, let's try a more difficult one. Okay, this is the one from our uh, examples uh, to do with the three by three systems. So step one again. Okay, what we're going to need to do is uh, convert this to right to an augmented matrix. Okay, so notice that I have a 1 in front of the x, a negative 2, and a plus 3, and an 11, and I'll put the augmentation down there in a minute. We have a 4, a 2, a negative 3, and a 4. We have a 3, a 3, a negative 1, and a 4. Here's my augmentation, and here's my matrix, like so. All right, now, the first thing I need is a 1 here, so we already have a 1. So that's good. All right, so now, what I need to do then is get zeros here. So what I need to do is get row 2, and I'm going to add negative 1, uh, negative 4 actually, times row 1 to produce our new row 2. I'm going to get my row 3, and I'm going to add negative 3 times row 1 to get a new row 3. Now the reason I've done that is I need a negative 4 here to get rid of this 4, and I need a negative 3 here to get rid of this one. 
Right, so my new system will be, notice that the first row stays the same. It's going to be 4 plus negative 4 is 0. Now notice I'm not multiplying this negative 4 by 2, so I've got 8, so I've got 2 plus 8 is going to be 10. Notice here that I have um, a negative 4, here it would be a negative 12, so negative 3 plus negative 12 is negative 15. And now of course we've got a negative 44, so it's going to be 4 plus negative, uh, 44 plus negative 44 would be negative 40. Then we do the bottom line, so we end up with a negative 3 up here, 3 plus negative 3 is 0. Be careful of your arithmetic here. Negative 3, now I'm multiplying negative 3 by here to get a 6, so 3 plus 6 is 9. And now, of course, we have a negative 9 here. Negative 1 plus negative 9 is negative 10. And we have here a negative 33. We have 4 uh, plus um, negative uh, 33. So 4 plus negative 33 would be negative 29 I think is that right I think so okay so be careful you can always check it so we get a negative 3 here a 6 here and a negative 9 here so this is 0 9 and we have um, negative 10 and now we have a negative 33 and 4 plus negative 33 would be negative 29 so it looks good all right next all right what we need to do now is, of course, um, we need to get a, a 1 in here. Okay. Now, there's a couple of things we can do here. Notice that we could write, um, if I go through here, 1, negative 2, 3, 11. Let me tidy this up a little bit. And I could have a 0. And if I don't go through by 5s, um, we could get uh, 2 negative 3 and negative 8 okay all right so uh, let's have a look and see we can't really do much with this one like so all right now what I need to do is get a, uh, a 1 here and I need to get a, um, a 0 here now, the way we can do that is a couple of ways. I could leave doing the 1 there, but that will produce some fractions. So what I could do is this. I could write this here as, um, I get uh, row 3. Um, oh, let's get a 1. Okay, let's do that. All right, so this now becomes... 1, negative 2, 3. Sometimes I like to avoid fractions, but sometimes it's just as easy to go ahead and do them. So I get a 1 here, a negative 3 halves here. And we're going to have a negative 4 here. So what I've take, done is, in fact, um, taken my row, uh, a half row 2, to produce my new row 2. Now I'm going to take one ninth of row three and produce a new row three. So I'm going to get a zero, one, negative 10 on nine, and negative 29 on nine. Okay. All right, now I'm going to get um, row three plus negative one row two to produce our new row three. Now, sometimes you might want to do some working out over here. So the first thing is our first row stays the same. Second row is staying the same. Now, uh, if we come across here now, we have clearly uh, 0 plus 0 is 0. 1 plus negative 1 is 0. So we've really only got one calculation to do here, and that is negative 10 on 9. And we're multiplying this by a negative 1, so it's going to be plus 3 halves. So if I put this on 18, all right, we're going to have a negative 20 
and we're going to have multiple by 9, and that's plus uh, 27. 9 here, so I end up with 7 eighteenths. Right now, what we need, of course, is what happens here. If I come across here, what I've got is negative 29 on 9 plus 4. So it's going to be negative 29 on 9 plus 36 on 9. And that's going to be uh, 7 on 9. Okay. All right, so we get 7 on 9. Right, so let's move on. Now, let's see if we can change this a little bit. Now, we're going to have a 1, a negative 2, a 3 here. We haven't changed that. We've got an 11 here. Right, I'm going to keep this one the same. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, multiply through by... Um, uh, let's have a look. So, I'll multiply through by 18... So let's do that. So let's multiply through by 18. So row 3, so 18 times row 3 become my new row 3. So that's going to be a 0 here. So 18 times it would be a 7. 18 here goes to, that'll be 14. Okay. All right, so this now becomes 1, negative 2, 3, 11, 0, 1, negative 3 halves and negative 4. And now I can get row 3, 1 seventh row 3 becomes my new row 3. And so I get 0, 0, 1, 2. There we go. All right. So that's where we are so far. Now, what we want to do is we want to get a 0 uh, here. Okay, so what I need to do then is I need to um, get my row 2. And I need to add three halves of row three to produce my new row two. Okay. So I get negative two, three, and this hasn't changed. Right, and the one below hasn't changed. So we get that. Now <clears throat> we get zero plus zero is zero. One plus zero is one. So they stay the same. Negative three halves plus three halves is zero. And now I need to be careful, and we have to have uh, uh, negative 4, okay? And we need to um, add 3 times 2, 3 on 2 times 2 here, because we've multiplied this row 3 here by 3 halves, so that goes and that goes. So it's going to be negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1. Okay. All right, next. All right, now we're, what else do we need? We need a 0 here and we need a, a 0 here. So I'm going to get row 1 and I'm going to add row 2, or actually twice row 2, to produce now a new row 1. So 0, 0, 1, 2. These stay the same, like the filaments, so I don't make a mistake. Right, so it's going to be 1 plus 0 is 1. Negative 2 plus 2 is 0. 3 plus 0 is still 3. And 11 uh, plus um, negative 2 is going to be uh, 9. Okay. Right, now what I need is, notice I've got a 3 here, I need a 0 row there, so I can use this row, last row, so I can get row 1, right, plus negative 3, row 3, to produce our new row 1. And so this now becomes 0, 0, 1, these stay the same. 0, 1, 0, negative 1 stays the same. Now let's have a look. 1 plus 0 is 1. 0 plus 0 is 0. 3 plus negative 3 is 0. And now I have 9 plus negative 6 would make it 3. Right, now notice now that we have our solution. 
by reading, remember that this is x, y, and z, and these are the constants. So what I have is x is equal to 3, y is equal to negative 1, and z is equal to 2. So my solution is a single point for these three planes to, uh, to meet. And our solution set then is going to be the ordered triplet 3, negative 1, 2. Okay. All right. Now I want to look at a different kind of example. Notice here that this one is two equations. All right. And two unknown, two variables. So we can do it exactly the same way. Step one again is we change it to augmented matrix. Like so. All right, now we want to get a one up here. Okay, so we can model, get our half of row one uh, to produce a new row one. So I end up with um, one, negative uh, three halves, and seven on two. And we have a negative six, nine, and zero. Now I need a zero here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a row three, uh, sorry, row two, and we're going to add six times row one to produce a new row two. All right, so let's do that. Negative six plus six is zero. Now let's do our little sum over here. We're going to have um, we're going to have negative three on two, or actually nine plus um, negative 3 on 2, but we're multiplying that by 6, right? So it's going to be 9 minus 2, no, 3, 9. That gives me a 0. Okay. And now we need um, a row 2, which will be 0, plus 6 times this, so it's 0, plus 6 times 7 on 2, which is going to be 42 on 2, which is 21. Okay, now, notice something here. We've got zero here and zero here. There's no way I can actually use row two to get a zero here. Furthermore, since these are x's and the, sorry, this is x's and this is y's, and this is the constants, what this is saying is that zero y is equal to 21. But zero y is zero, which is really zero equals to 21. And this is impossible. Okay, so that's impossible. So this is an inconsistent system. All right, and so the solution is, all right, the null set. Okay, so whenever we get a zero is all on this side of the augmentation and non-zero here on one of the rows, then I have an inconsistent system. And that's a way to uh, actually verify that you have a uh, inconsistent system. Right, next one. Now notice in this case here, I ha actually have uh, two equations, but three variables. So that's a little bit different now. Right, so let's uh, do our first step again, step one. All right, let's make an augmented matrix. like this, okay? Notice that this one is actually a two by four matrix. Okay, now, what are we going to do with this? All right, so what we need, notice that we have a one here already. So that's good news. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna get row two and I'm going to add negative three, row one, to produce a new row two. All right, so row one stays the same. So I'm gonna have three plus negative three is zero. I have negative one. Now what's negative three times negative eight is 24. So it's negative, or negative 24. So uh, it's positive 24, so negative three by 
negative 8 is positive 24. Negative 1 plus 24 is negative uh, is 23, actually. Yep, 23. All right, next, this is negative 3 here. 2 plus negative 3 is negative 1. And now we have a negative 1 plus negative 12 is negative 13. Okay. All right, so we have that now. We want to get a 1 here, so we're going to get 1 on 23 of uh, row 2 to produce a new row 2. So we get a 1, negative 8, 1, 4. We're going to have a 0, 1, negative 1 on 23, and negative 13 on 23. All right, sometimes the numbers aren't very good. All right, now, how are we going to deal with this? All right, now, we really uh, got our zero here that we needed. It would be nice to get a uh, zero here, okay? But um, then we've got, we'd like to get a zero here as well. Now, if you look closely at this, it's going to be very difficult to do that because as soon as I multiply this one by something and add it to this one, it's going to change something up here. It may change this, or we might get a zero here, it's going to cause a problem here, and so forth. So really we can't go any further here. So if we look at what we've got here, we've got a couple of things going on. Number one, remember that this is x, y, and z. So what I have here is, um, We're reading this off as a x minus 8y plus z is equal to 4. That's true. And we're having this as a y minus 1 23rd z is equal to negative 13 on 23. Right, now notice here that we can write y in terms, in terms of z. Okay. So this is what I want you to notice here. So if I write y is equal to 1 on 23z minus 13 on 23. Of course, this could be written as simply z minus 13 right there. Now, what I could do is replace my y in here and get x in terms of z. So let's have a look at doing that. So what I have here is x minus 8 times z minus 13 on 23 is equal to 4. Uh, plus z, I should say, is equal to 4. All right, so if we look at this, we're going to have x is going to be equal to um, 8z minus 13 over 23 minus z and then add 4. Notice that I've got all z's. I've just got to tidy this up now. So x is going to be equal to, so let's have a look here. We're going to have 8z minus 8t and 24 is 104 minus 23z all over 23. And then we're going to add 4. So if we can multiply here um, 4 times uh, 23, that's what, 80, 92 or a little bit. All right, so um, let's make sure that's correct. That's 8 and 92, that's right. This is 8 and 24, right, good. Now, what else have we got here? Well, let's tidy this up now. This is going to be negative, and we've got 23, 8 here is going to be 15. And 92, that's going to be 12. So notice that we've got x in terms of z and y in terms of z. All right, so z can be anything, any real number. So we have an infinite number of solutions. All right, so let's have a look at that. All right, so our solution would have, has the form All 
All right, well, what's x? x is negative 15z minus 12 on 23. All right, what's my y? My y is z minus 13 on 23, and of course, z. Okay, so this is our form, and this is the form of our solution here, and it's a consistent system. It just has an infinite number of solutions. Now, if I want to find a particular solution, right, let's suppose, say, z equals 0, then I'd end up with negative 12 on 23, I'd end up with negative 13 on 23, and 0 would be my point. Okay, and away we go. So we can build up an infinite number of points there, but this is just an example of what a particular point would be. All right, but this is now our general solution. Right, to a consistent system. That has an infinite number of solutions. Okay, so the key is there be very careful the way you do your arithmetic.